Okay, we've just gone over basic drum EQ and, and level setting, uh, which a lot of those theories apply to the rest of our channels. Uh, now I'd like to go over uh, some more advanced uh, techniques uh, for gates and compression uh, to creatively come up with some sounds uh, and help just make your mix have that much more uh, impact and um, depth to them. So we'll start by talking about some compression. Compression is um, a way to deal with what's called the envelope of a transient. Um, so you can affect the attack of a transient, how quickly it hits uh, out of a speaker, uh, to the decay, uh, and basically you can elongate or uh, or make less punchy uh, different transients to achieve different effects. A good example of elongating a transient would be to take the hit off of a snare bottom and gain back up with a slower release so that you get that rattle to last a little bit longer and you can get like an explosive type snare that way. Um, a good example of making a transient more punchy would be to slow down your attack and let that initial come through but then compress the tail a little bit so uh, you can get some hit but not have a lot of ring. So when you're dealing with a big room, um, you can get some punch out of the PA but not get all the mud that the room's gonna uh, generate when you're just throwing lots and lots of noise into it. Let's start going over these compression techniques with our kick drum. Our kick drum uh, is good because we have two mics in this scenario. One where I'm gonna have some punch that I want and one where I'm gonna want a little bit of carryover. Uh, for the low end. Uh, so I'll start with kick in um, and we'll hit the view button on this dynamic section, okay? Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out some of these other sounds by muting them. Cool. So that's our kick in mic right there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go for around, around a 5.0 to 1 uh, ratio. Uh, and our attack, so we want the punch, we're gonna slow it down, okay? Let's slow it down to about 30, 36 milliseconds slow. Transients on kick drums are somewhere between 30 and 50 milliseconds, thereabout. That's usually the full breadth of a whole transient. Then you get the tail on the ring. Uh, this particular compressor has a hold on it, which I will turn down, because I don't want the compressor holding. And I'll use the release, I'll Use a moderately slow to slightly fat uh, to, to a little bit faster than slow uh, release with about 70 to 80 milliseconds, depending on the sound. So then we'll bring our threshold down. Okay, and what we should start to hear is the tail end of the kick drum not being so prominent, but the initial hit of the kick drum being a fair bit more prominent. We'll go ahead and bring the makeup game back up. And we'll take this in and out of line. It's out, you can hear the tail. It's in, you can let a little bit more slap, a little bit more punch, okay? So let's go ahead and work on our kick out, which is where all of our low end is, okay? If you can hear that, what I'll do for the sake of this is I'll turn the kick in down on, but I'll keep it low so that you can hear the initial. For this, what I really want to do is kind of tighten up on the, the front end, because we have the punch, but kind of make the, the tail a little bit breathier for our kick in. So we're going to go ahead and start with a similar ratio, 5 to 1. We're going to go ahead with a little bit of a faster attack. So I'll go maybe like 24, 25, um, take our hold down again, because we don't need that on this particular case. Bring our threshold down. Get, get about the same as the other one, 2 to 3 dBA compression, more than enough, especially in the live arena. Get the speed up the release so that the tail comes back out quicker, quicker. Okay. So what we're gonna get is a pairing of the punch that we pulled out of the kick in and the tail that we have in the kick out. So just so you can hear this, and I can emphasize this, I'll take this out of line so you can hear it. Gain back up a little bit by 2 dB, because that's about the amount that we're going to be compressing. So here is the original. And here's the, I'm going to put this back in line and you should hear the tail become a little bit more prominent. Okay, 
Still a little bit of a punch in there. Cool. Now I'm going to go put them back together. So we'll take the compressor out on both. That's without compression. That's with compression. Okay, it's just a little bit more defined. It's not a lot. We don't have to get crazy with the compressors, um, but it'll give us just a little bit more definition and power. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about snare compression. Here's where things can get a little bit more extreme and a little bit more creative. We're gonna do the same concept we did with the kick in and the kick out. We're gonna get some punch out of one, some crack out of the top, and we're gonna get a lot of uh, breath out of this, the bottom. So we'll start with our snare top. Okay, we're on our compression page still. Let's use a fairly aggressive ratio, all right? Let's use a seven to one ratio. Let's slow our attack down, right the way down, 50 milliseconds-ish. Let's get rid of our hold. And let's go with like a 90, 90 millisecond release, a bit slower on the release. What I'm gonna achieve there is, um, I'm gonna get the punch to come out, but I'm also gonna let the rise be a little bit slower to mimic elongating our snare a bit. Let's go ahead and bring this down. Let's get a little bit crazy. Okay, 40 B. I'll quicken up the release a little bit because it's kind of kind of cutting into the next hits a little too much for my liking. Let's gain it back up. Okay. Let's take this in and out of line. It's currently in. Let's take it out. Okay. Let's put it back in. You should hear the pop come out and a little bit more tail. Okay. Tail gets a little bit longer. Pop gets more prominent. Notice that the background noise in the snare also comes up. Be aware that when you're using compression, you're going to lift the noise floor. So if you don't have great isolation on your mics, you're going to be creating more cymbal bleed, more background bleed, uh, and things can get messy quick. So use compression in a way that's uh, moderate, achieving your artistic goals, but um, not going to cause you problems in other areas. This is why this is a more advanced feature, because uh, if you're not very comfortable with this, you could actually work yourself into a corner. Let's go to snare bottom. Okay. We're going to try the opposite of what we did with the snare top. We're really fast attack, a uh, little bit slow release, uh, and try and get that rattle to just ring through with the kick hits, with snare hits, make it longer, see if we can get this thing to really rock. Go, get rid of this hold, make sure our attack is real fast. Let's take it right the way down to zero. Round about the same release for the starters, and we'll use our ears. You always use your, use your ears to judge changes. Get real crazy with it, 6 dB of compression. Gonna adjust our release a little bit. You can hear it. You can hear that tail kind of elongate a little bit as the compressor releases. We can bring our gain back up, our makeup gain. Here's an instance where background noise is actually gonna work in our favor, and it's one of the few instances where it does. Because now what you're hearing is the kick. Every time the kick hits, you hear some rattle. What that does for the listener is it actually triggers the ear to think uh, that it's really an acoustic kit, even if you're using samples and stuff, because when you're playing the drums and you're hitting the kick, the snare's gonna rattle. You hit the tom, the snare's gonna rattle. So that rattle is actually a real key to authenticity here. Now let's show you what this compressor sounds like out of line and in line so you can hear exactly what I'm trying to explain. That's the original. Hear how there's no rattle on the kick and it's just barely there when the snare's hitting? Let's put it back in line. Hear it? Okay, and let's show you what the snare sounds like top and bottom with, with and without compression. So here's uh, without. Here's gonna be with. Big body, big explosions, okay? You know, that just smacks you in the face. Here's our drums without. Okay, let's put it back in. Huge, okay? Just a little bit of compression here and there, a little bit more on the snare, huge. 
Okay, so let's start working on some overheads. We're gonna use uh, compressors similar to the way we did on the snare bottom. We're going to get rid of some transient and we're going to elongate the symbols, make them a little bit more explosive uh, and also give some room in the transient space for the close mics to pop through. So let's bring our acoustic our overheads back up. Okay, in our compression window, we're only gonna use a four to one here. Not so crazy. We're gonna bring it down our threshold here. We're gonna get our tack nice and right around 15, I'd say, is a good, good fast attack for this. Let's get rid of our hold. Turn it faster to get rid of it. Get our game back up. Okay, you can hear already the symbols starting to explode. Let's get rid of our compressor. Pretty dry, pretty standard. Let's put our compressor back in line. Okay, cool. Let's put our drums back in. Take our compressor off the overheads. Kind of just loses a little bit of life. Let's put our compressor back on the overheads. Okay, cool. Sounded huge, sounded nice and big and punchy. Sweet. Let's move over to our toms. We'll get them prepped and we'll show you what we can do with toms to just make them absolutely epic with some compression. Okay, let's pull our overheads down. Kick and snare down a little bit so we can focus here. Tom one. So, it's pretty good, a little bit short, but I know that there's more tail there. So let's, let's get some pop and let's bring the tail out. So combination of what we've been doing with the snare top and the snare bottom, the kick in and the kick out, we're gonna let some transient in, but we're gonna let the tail kind of come back a little bit slow to make the tom bigger. Okay, so let's go over here to our compressor. Let's use, say, a five to one ratio. Let's come down. Let's go ahead and get rid of the hold. Let's go with about 100 milliseconds on the release. Okay, I personally like about five dB of compression on the toms. Again, dealing live, watch out for your noise floor. Often toms have a lot of cymbal bleed. Cool. You can hear how that slower attack, or sorry, the slower release lets that tail come back out a bit slower and just kind of makes it bigger. Cool. Let's take uh, compression off and show you what that's like with and without. This is without. Just kind of a pop and dies. Let's put it back in. You can hear it a bit longer. Cool. We're gonna do the same thing with the other tom. Kind of get, just kind of dies a little bit. Let's do the same thing. Slow down the attack a little bit. Let's get rid of the hold. Let's go to about 100, 116. Let's get about four or five dB of compression on it. Now I can quickly see here that uh, this release might be a little too slow. Get that, that gain back on it. Cool. Slow down the release just a little bit. Cool, can you hear that? Kind of carries a bit longer. Let's hear without it. Doom. Let's put it back in. Doom. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for that nice, long, decaying, lowering in pitch sound. This is a preference, this is just the style of mixing for this song, it's working out well. Remember, it's all artistic choice. With the overheads in, let's show you what the toms sound like without compression. Okay, let's put the compressor back on the toms. Hear that, hear the tail come out. Cool. And that is how you use compression on drums.